Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Stealth Hitch on a 2022 BMW X3. Now this is going to be the one with the towing package which is going to allow you to have the wiring necessary and the ball mount to be able to tow a trailer safely. Now this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed and you might be wondering, well, where's the hitch? And that's kind of why the Stealth name has the name Stealth because when you're not using the hitch, it is completely hidden and you really won't see anything. That is until you put your receiver in either for your bike rack or in this case, it even has a ball mount for towing. Now, when you are ready to drop in your ball mount to tow, you're gonna have a rubber plug here, which is gonna keep our receiver opening nice and clean. And then you just simply take the ball mount, make sure that your key is in the unlock position and we'll just simply lift this in place when you push up, you're gonna hear that nice clunking sound. That means that it's locked in place and you're ready to go. Now, this actually does have pretty good towing capacity, especially for being a hitch that's hidden. Now, it comes with a two inch ball rated at 8,000 pounds, but the hitch itself is actually rated at a gross trailer weight rating of 6,000 pounds. And that's gonna be your trailer plus the accessories loaded on there. Now the tongue weight is also very good. So when you swap this over to your two inch receiver and you have a suspended accessory, or even when you are towing, you wanna to worry about your tongue weight, 600 pounds is pretty solid. So overall, not a bad little system for towing a trailer. Now before you tow a trailer that is rated at 6,000 pounds, you wanna check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing and then compare that with what the hitch is rated at. Take the lower of those two numbers and that way you stay safe. Now, when you are ready to tow, you're going to need to hook your chains up to your safety chain loops. And these are tucked back there. And part of that is because this is a stealth hitch. You don't want to have those hidden or you don't want those to be seen. So you will have a little bit of trouble here. But again, it's got plenty of room to get your standard hook. And even a larger clevis style will also be able to get on here. Now, it is a little bit tight, you can see. So you may have to kind of just finagle it in there, but you are still able to hook those up. Now here next to our ball mount, you're also gonna be wanting to plug in your trailer and you have a seven way. So that's really nice to be able to just plug in. It's kind of faces down, which is great. It's gonna keep things out of there. It's also got a spring loaded cover. And if you're worried about, well, my trailer's a four pole, not to worry. They actually include an adapter here. So you're able to just hook this into your seven way. And then you can take your four pole, plug it into here and you're gonna get all of those same functions. Now, when you are ready to be done towing your trailer and you want to swap over to put a cargo carrier or a bike rack on there, not a problem. Again, just make sure that your key tumbler is in the unlock position and you'll just reach up to where that twist handle is, twist that, and this is going to pop out of place. We'll then go ahead and get our two inch receiver and then put this up. With a little quick force, we should be able to get this to pop in. And once you hear that sound, go ahead, lock your key up, and you're ready to hook that up. Now, with your two inch receiver in, your pin and clip hole is gonna be about flush with the rear fascia. So when you put your folding accessories like your bike racks or your cargo carriers, they should be able to stow here, no problem, without creating any contact with the fascia. Something to keep in mind though, is when they're in folded up position, not to open up your hatch, obviously. Um, now, it does not come with a pin and clip, but a lot of times, your accessories will come with those, so that's something to keep in mind when choosing accessories, but also if you wanna pick up a locking version, we have plenty of options here available at e-trailer, and this is gonna be a 5 8 pin and clip hole, so you'll be looking for that. Now, as far as ground clearance goes, we'll go ahead and measure from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, and that's coming in right at about 13 inches, so pretty good ground clearance overall, just something to keep in mind when you have some accessories that may drop down, or if you're driving on an incline, those will kind of get a little bit closer to the ground, so just keep that in mind when you're on rough or rocky terrain, or if you're going up a large incline. Now to have a hitch that's easily able to be hidden completely until you're using it is really nice. Now I will say the installation on this is a little bit tricky, but really most of the hitches on the BMWs are a little bit more involved. It does require taking the rear fascia off. Uh, the instructions are very good and if you follow them straight forward, they're going to get you through and also I'm going to be walking you through the installation process. The hitch itself not too bad, the wiring also isn't that bad as well. It's going to take a little bit of time, you're going to want to set aside at least a solid half day, maybe a long afternoon and you might want to have an extra set of hands to be able to pull the fascia off. But 
If you follow me step by step during our install, we'll get yours installed. We're going to begin our installation by opening up our rear hatch and we're going to be starting to pull some panels out to get our taillights out and that way we can get the fascia off. And pretty easy, there's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt that's tucked back here in order to get there. So we're going to need to pull these panels out. There's a handle here, you can just simply pull that out and just set these aside for now. Now before we get to the 10 millimeter bolt that's in there, we're going to need to take off this little panel and you'll see this knob here. It's kind of rubberized, but there is a little bit of uh, some bite that you can get to. So you can just simply unscrew this with your hand. We also have this plastic push pin that's pushed in here. So we're going to need to remove that and it is kind of tight. A plastic trim removal tool works well, but uh, I was also struggling a little bit uh, the last time I did this. So I'm going to be using a metal one here. You're just going to want to kind of lift this up. You can use your fingernail or a flathead screwdriver to just kind of pry this back. And using a trim panel tool, this is really easy to just pry this out. Uh, throughout the whole process of this installation, this is going to come in handy. So we go ahead, pop this out. So this should just kind of slide up and out here. And we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now with that plastic panel taken out, you're going to see that there's going to be two 10 millimeter nuts here. So we're going to go ahead and get these removed. And I'm going to also recommend any hardware that we take off that you keep it in a nice organized spot. It just makes it a lot easier for when you put everything back together. Now with these two taken out, there's also our 10 millimeter that's in this side here. So if you look in, you'll see in this little cutout here, there's a 10 millimeter bolt and that holds the tail light in as well. So go ahead and get this removed. Now be careful not to drop this. Um, it's very easy to do. So I suggest having a magnet close by because as you loosen this up, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure this doesn't fall into the plastic. Otherwise it's gonna be kind of hard to find. So now we can go ahead and take our tail light and pull this back. Now, sometimes it can catch on these threads here. So just kind of pry that slowly. And you don't want to pull out too far because we have our tail light plug here. So we're going to want to push this in to separate it. You can see this is where I pushed. And uh, we'll go ahead, set our tail light in a nice safe spot. And then we're just going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Now in each of our wheel wells towards the rear fascia, we're going to find that we have three rivets and these have two different ways of coming out. The first way is if you have a trim panel tool, these are pretty easy to kind of just wedge underneath them and you are going to be prying them out. Um, the kit comes with new rivets, so don't worry if you mangle them. So that brings me to the next point of how to remove them. If you don't have a trim panel tool, what also works is you can take a drill bit and just drill in the center and that's going to allow that to come out. And you may still need to pry them out with like a flathead screwdriver or something along those lines. Um, they take a little bit of pressure here. So you can see I'm wedged under and I'm just going to kind of pull this out. And it is going to break the rivet, as you can tell. But again, we are replacing those. So we'll go ahead and get the three of them out on this side. And we're also going to repeat that on the other side. Now, with those rivets taken out, we're going to be able to pull this plastic trim back. Now, you're going to want to make sure you don't pull it too much, because if you bend the plastic, it's going to leave a crease on here. So the best way I found to do this is pull this portion down first. And this, this is going to pop out, which is totally fine. And you'll see it, it kind of interlocks into that. And that makes it really easy to just kind of work your way up, even with your hands. And you're going to want to stop right about here. And you'll see that's going to gain us access to these two eight millimeter bolts. So uh, getting a socket and ratchet on this one may push this plastic out a little bit. So using a small eight millimeter wrench, this is going to be, I think, the best option here. We'll just go ahead and get these removed and then we'll repeat the exact same process on the other side. So now that we have this outer wheel well liner here loose, we don't want this to rub against the paint and scratch it. So just for a little preventative measure, I'm gonna take some painter's tape and just kind of put this along where the clips are. And that's gonna, again, just in case it starts rubbing against here, it's gonna at least protect it a little bit. And I'm also going to tape these seams here because we're going to be pulling off the fascia and I already have the tape here. So I'll just go ahead and just run this along the body line. Again, this is just going to help when we take the fascia off and put it back on. And sometimes it can be a little bit tight and tricky, so we don't want this rubbing against it and leaving permanent marks. 
So now we'll go to where our taillights were and you're gonna see an eight millimeter screw. We're gonna have one on each side. We'll go ahead and get those removed. So now we're gonna go underneath the vehicle and you're gonna want a 10 millimeter socket. So there's gonna be two on each side. So we'll go ahead and get those. And then as we work our way over, we're gonna be taking this underbody panel here off. So there's gonna be 10 millimeters across the board there, as well as where the fascia bolts in to the support. So all of these 10 millimeters here are gonna be coming out. So go ahead and get those all removed. And once you get this underbody panel off, you can go ahead and set it aside. We'll be doing some trimming to it later, but for now we'll set this aside and then make sure you get the two that are over here and that should be all of it for the 10 millimeters. Now we're getting ready to take our fascia off. So you're gonna to wanna to grab an extra set of hands. That way you're not dropping your fascia. There's also gonna be an electric plug. So while you're holding the fascia, it's hard to actually unclip this by yourself. So grab an extra set of hands and that way it's a little bit safer. Now we're gonna start on the outside and slowly work our way in. And the best way I've found is you can see it's, there's this fender liner here. If you kind of just peel that back to get your hands, you can go ahead and just kind of pull a little bit and there's gonna be clips along this, but the outside ones seem to go pretty smooth here. You can see already it's starting to pop. Now, once you get to these ones, they can be a little bit tricky and because they're interlocked into there, you can see there's this tab and it loops through our fascia. So this painted portion that's right here, you're gonna want to push down on the tab and a small flathead seems to work pretty well. So just push down on this tab while pushing that fascia out and that way it can kind of unhinge. So what you'll do here, you can put a little bit of pressure by pulling it's going to be a little tricky, but again, once we kind of unlatch that, it'll make it a little bit easier. As you can see, I just kind of push down on the tab and pull this, and that way it unlatches it. And then you're going to slowly work your way to the next one and just kind of continue the process. Now, be careful here because you don't want to break the tabs on the fascia. This is what kind of keeps this in place. So just take your time. Make sure those tabs are pushed down. So once you have those tabs popped out, we should be able to take our fascia and kind of slowly move this out. So just kind of grab on the outside and slowly again, work your way out. Now there are clips on the center, but those tend to pop out pretty easy. Now before you pull too far, you're gonna see on the passenger side, there's gonna be an electrical connector here. So we'll just push on this tab and separate this. Now we can go ahead and set our fascia in a nice safe spot. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this plastic portion taken off of our bumper beam and it's just gonna be a series of push pin fasteners. So to get these off, you'll see there's some slots here. Just gonna to wanna to pry on the center portion to raise there and then the whole thing should come out. So we'll go ahead and get all of these removed. So now with our plastic push pins taken out, this is gonna simply just kind of live up here. I would suggest just kind of tucking this back so it doesn't get in the way. Um, you, you can zip tie it up if you want, but this works well. Now our hitch is gonna live in between the frame of the vehicle and our bumper beam. So we're gonna go ahead and get the bumper beam off using an 18 millimeter socket. Uh, keep this hardware handy as well as the bumper beam because we're gonna grab the hitch right after and put it back up. So you'll see that there's a nut here that's on the stud. There's also one that you're gonna be able to access by passing it through here. So you are gonna need an extension, but we'll go ahead, get these removed. Now also attached to our bumper beam is gonna be our exhaust supports here, which is gonna be a 13 millimeter nut. So we'll go ahead and get those removed. Now we can go ahead and take our impact bar. We can just slide this out. We'll take our hitch, line it up to those stud holes. Put our bumper beam back on. and then use our same hardware that we just took off. And I'm just gonna hand tighten it on for now so it's holding in place, then we can tighten it down. Now's a good time to make sure that your hitch is perfectly center. It should be just about right, um, but we don't have to get too crazy as far as tightening them down. We just want it snug. We're gonna come back with a torque wrench and make sure that it's perfectly tight. Now 
Now with our torque wrench, we're just gonna use the settings that are found in the instruction manual. And we're gonna go through and tighten these all down. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. You can generally rent them at an auto parts store. It's gonna be important though to make sure that it's gonna be tight enough to where it's not gonna become loose over time, but also it's not gonna be too tight putting stress on those threads. So we'll go through, get these all torqued down properly. So now we can go ahead and take our plastic panel and this is just gonna go back on with our plastic push pins. Now you're gonna see, it does stretch the wire a little bit here. So if you want to, you can go ahead and pop this out with a trim panel tool, but it should still line up without causing any damage. So we'll just push these back in. So now we're gonna to wanna to grab our bolts, our nylon lock nuts, our receiver block, our Z bracket, as well as our safety chain loop brackets. And what we're gonna do is take our safety chain loop here, uh, one of the brackets here, and the hole's gonna be facing towards the front of the vehicle, so just keep that in mind. And what's gonna happen here is we're gonna be passing the bolt through right here, and then our block is also gonna go in. So let's go ahead, we'll get our block in place and I'll pass both bolts through. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have this orientated proper, properly. So your handle is gonna be on the right when your keys are gonna be on the driver's side here. So we are gonna kinda of have to loop this through. So it's gonna get a little bit tricky here. Um, we'll just kinda of feed this in. So feed it in on this long end here, and that'll make it a little bit easier. Um, and then, so this is going to have the hitch sandwich in between, so just make sure that you slide that up. Put the hitch in between, and then you can go ahead and run the bolt through, and that's gonna at least hold this in place. Now on this side, we're gonna do the same thing here. So just make sure that, again, the safety chain loop is facing towards the front of the vehicle. And then before putting our nylon lock nuts on, we're gonna to need to put our Z bracket. So you'll see the holes here. This is gonna just feed over like that. And then I'm gonna just get our nuts in place, just hand tighten, that way it stays all together. So now we're gonna be using a 15 16 socket and we're gonna have one on both sides. So you are gonna need two ratchets and two sockets with an extension. It's gonna be really tricky to kind of get a wrench on there and have a good bite. We're gonna tighten this down and then we're gonna to attempt to get this torque down properly. So go ahead and get both of them nice and snug. So now coming back with our torque wrench and using the torque setting in the instruction manual, We'll go ahead and get this tightened down. Now, I always try to use a torque wrench on the nut side. That seems to be a better way to tighten it. So just take your time here and get these both torqued down. To do our wiring portion, we're gonna need to pull back this area. This is gonna gain us access to where we'll be tying in. And we should be able to just kind of, uh, there's some plastic push pins here on the side. So we can go ahead We'll get this one removed. There's another one here. Um, and that way we can kind of work this out and give us a little bit more access. We can just kind of pull this up for now. This should be more than enough space here. Now we're also gonna to need to get our cargo cover here that we have in our back. We're gonna open this up and there's gonna be few spots here for a flathead screwdriver. There's also gonna be plastic push pins right here. Um, and that's gonna gain us access to our battery area. So we'll go ahead and get those taken out. So now we're gonna want to go ahead and remove, there's four nuts here that are gonna be coming off. This plastic panel needs to come off to gain us access. And this is gonna be a 10 millimeter. There's one there, there's one, they're all kind of tucked in the pockets, except for this one's a little bit more exposed.
Now we're going to be drilling through this grommet to pass our wires through down to our plug and there's dimples here that suggest where you should drill through but there is wiring here and when this grommet is in place that wiring can actually tuck back and you really don't want to cut through those with your drill bit. So I've actually popped ours out that way I know for sure that there's nothing in the way and just using a 3 8 drill bit I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go through our grommet here being careful not to poke through and hit our wires. So now go ahead and grab your module. It's gonna have all the wires attached and we're gonna be looking for the wires that are in this black sheathing. And this will actually pass through our grommet. And our module is gonna live in this side here, but we wanna pass this through to kind of get this in place. So go ahead, feed this in and through the grommet. And there's a little slit in the carpet inside that you'll be able to pass this through. And then we'll just run this. You may need to enlarge the hole, but now that you kind of know where it sits, you'll be able to take the drill and kind of work it side to side. And that's going to get give us enough space to pass this sheathing through. And once you kind of reach this point, we should be just fine. Now, you're going to see the green or the purple and blue wires here. These are going to be for our reverse surge and also a brake controller. So if you plan on using that in the future or tying into it now, you're going to be tying into these wires. We're not going to be doing that, so we can just simply tape these up and that way they'll be left in case they later on want to add that into it. But for now, we have this pulled through, so I'm going to go ahead and put our grommet back in place. I'm just kind of pinching that uh, ringed edge here and that should allow us to get this in place. It is rather tight fit so you may need to use a flat head or something along that to kind of work along the edge. Now we're going to want to mount our module up because we're going to be starting to run the wires and we want to have a solid location for this. So just using zip ties, there's two holes, you can go ahead and attach this to something uh, that's going to hold it in place. And there's, it looks to be like a drain tube along here that's mounted up. So just kind of went around there and that should keep this in place. If you want to, you can add a few more zip ties around the wiring just to kind of make it a little bit more of a secure connection. Now our yellow wire we've routed over to the driver's side and I just kind of tucked it underneath the plastic here and if you pass it back there's an opening that's going to allow that wire to kind of poke through and we're going to want to pull this up. Now we're going to be tying into the left turn signal and if you just follow the plug from the outside you'll see it kind of routes up and I peeled back some of this insulation and we're going to be looking for the green and blue wire. Um, we're going to want to tie in here, that way we're not really uh, pu putting tension on the plug near the taillight. Uh, this allows it to kind of snap into place and kind of still maintain the factory location there. So using our quick splice connector here, we're going to just put this in place and then we'll put our green and blue wire in and snap this down and that's going to make our wiring connection tying it together. So I'll get that snapped in and then uh, I'll show you the rest of the connections that we've made. So here I've gone ahead and used our quick splice and to get these in place, if you've never used them before, there's going to be a top lid portion that doesn't have the metal portions in it. You're going to want to snap the wires into place. It's going to hold it in and then you'll just simply close that down, making sure those wires are nice and aligned in the slots. And then you're going to want to go back with a set of pliers and just crimp that down. And once it goes flush, that should bite into the wires, making our connection. So I've gone ahead on our passenger side and made our connections and our green wire, which is going to be our right turn signal wire, attaches to the green and gray wire. Now we also have our marker light, which is going to be for our running lights, which is brown, and that's going to be connecting to our gray and yellow wire. Now our red wire is normally a brake light wire. This isn't going to be used because the vehicle doesn't use a separate brake light circuit. So we've gone ahead and just zip tied this up and this can be kind of tucked out of the way. So now that we have all of our wires going to our turn signals and where those need to go, now we need to start making our ground and our power using our white and black wire. So now we're going to want to start with our white wire and we're going to be attaching it to this factory ground. So you'll see that's going to be just a 10 millimeter nut. So we'll get that off and then we're just going to trim our wire down um, to where there's not a ton of excess like we have currently. And we're going to go ahead and put this little fork terminal here and crimp this down and attach it to our ground. So now with our ground attached, we're going to go ahead and grab our black wire and we're going to be attaching that to the positive terminal on the battery. 
So now to tie into our positive side of the battery, you actually have this positive terminal block here. So you can pop this cap off and that's gonna allow us to tie into this pretty easily with our fuse holder. So um, I can see that we don't have a nut on this one. So we can go ahead and take that nut off and get this ring terminal in place. And then we can make our connection. But before doing any of that, make sure that you pull the fuse out. That's gonna stop any power from going through there. And we're not gonna put the fuse in until we've made all of our connections on our seven pull. So hang tight until we're completely done. Then we can put our fuse in. So once you get your ring terminal attached on the fuse holder, we're gonna go ahead and I've just trimmed off the excess wire on our power wire here. So just route it down to make sure obviously you can reach the fuse holder. And then we'll just go ahead and make this connection. So now we can start to head down and get our seven pole connected. Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to take your wires and just kind of run it along the hitch here. Uh, they do include some zip ties. We can go back and tighten that all up later, but for now, we wanna be able to run this through. There is a hole on the Z bracket, and it's kind of a tight fit, but if you run that through, that's gonna keep those wires in a nice spot. Um, so what we'll do now is go ahead and take the outside receptacle here, and you may have this little screw that needs to be backed out, but that's just gonna allow us to pass our wires through. And you can just push this up a decent amount right now because we need to make our connections to the inside portion. So you'll see here, they're all gonna be tightened down. There's a little clamp here and it's just done with a Phillips head screwdriver. So just back this out and then what we'll do once we strip our wires is kind of try to loop it around uh, that screw there and as we tighten it, it should hold it in place. Now we've got these all in place and Unfortunately, if you follow the imprinted colors that correspond, it's not gonna be correct. You're gonna to wanna to refer to your instruction manual, but I'm also gonna walk you through here. So using this notch, this is gonna be our reference point. Taking a look at this, we're gonna go counterclockwise here. So we'll start, we have white, next we have yellow, then we have brown, and then we have black, followed by green, and then blue. Now in our center one, we have our purple. So just go ahead and make sure that these are all nice and tightened down and that your wires are not gonna become loose. And then we're gonna be feeding this in, but also before we do that, I wanna put a little bit of dielectric grease on here just to kind of protect our connections for long-term use. And dielectric is just gonna help prevent moisture from really breaking down and getting in between here and causing corrosion on our wires. So if you need to pick some up, we have some available here at E-Trailer, and this is just a good added uh, preventative maintenance here for uh, long-term use of your wiring harness. So now we can slide this in, and there is a notch on one portion here on the bottom. So if you have this lid open, it can really only slide in one way. So go ahead and pull this through. and that should sit nice and flush in there. Now kind of giving pressure here to make sure that it doesn't fall out at all, we're gonna go ahead and take our screws that came in the kit and we're just gonna tighten these down and that's just gonna hold everything in place. Now we're also going to take this set screw and tighten this down and that's gonna keep our wires from really pulling and causing any damage to our connections down here. Now we're gonna to wanna to grab our bracket and we're gonna be using this to attach to our Z bracket. And you can see there is a little slot here. So that's gonna allow you to pass this over the wires here. Um, our bracket's going to sit on our plug like this. So just make sure that you have this angled back. And you see that's gonna align with the holes there. So we'll go ahead and get our hardware and mount this up. So now for a little added protection, I'm gonna just go ahead and take some electrical tape and just kind of wrap this all the way around. And that way we can kind of create a nice seal. So just go around until we have it all wrapped up and there's no openings. We'll go ahead and get this in place here. We'll just pass our screws through. And then on the back side, we're gonna have a flat washer as well as a star washer and our nut. So we'll go ahead and get those in place as well.
So now we're gonna go ahead and plug our taillights back in because we're gonna temporarily test this before we put everything back in place. And we also need to take our fuse and put that in our fuse holder and that way we can get power, power sent to our plug. So now we're gonna go ahead and test ours. We're using a seven pole tester here. The other way that you can test is hooking up to your trailer and testing to make sure that you have the light functions. Now ours has kicked on, which leads me to believe that we already have power going to it, which is a good sign. So now we're gonna run through our light sequence. And if you're using your reverse lockout as well as your trailer brake controller, this is also a time that you're gonna to want to test that as well. But we're gonna do just our light sequence. So the first thing we'll do is our running light. Next, we'll do our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and then finally our brakes. So now that we know that our wiring is working properly, we have our hitch installed. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cleaned up with some zip ties that were included in the kit and just kind of make everything a little bit cleaner. And then we're just gonna reinstall everything, including our panels uh, and our rear fascia in the reverse order. Also make sure that you get your exhaust bolted back up and also that plug that goes onto the rear fascia. Now also you've probably noticed that we need to make a hole here on our underbody panel. And I've gone ahead and taped this out. And this is gonna be a large portion, not only to get our plug, but also to have a spot for our hand to actually be able to put the key in and use the latch on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut through this. A sharp pair of scissors or even tin snips will work just fine through here. So now we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just kinda of test fit this and make sure that we have clearances everywhere we need. So obviously we have room for our plug there. We also have room to get our key in. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that your hand is able to reach in here. So if you have larger hands, you might even wanna cut this out a little bit. You can leave these two holes and just kinda of notch this out to make it a little bit easier. But once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and get your screws in. And that was a look and installation of the Stealth Hitch with towing package on a 2022 BMW X3.